What's up guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I'm back with a long overdue DM's Guild Spotlight. Remember when I used to do these every week? Uh, sorry that it's been so few and far between. Uh, we've obviously ramped up the streams and the campaigns in the channel. Uh, since I was, doing, I was doing it weekly, you know, I've had a kid, there's been a lot of other things that have happened. So, um, I've basically reduced my DM's Guild uh, Spotlight reviews, as, as well as my Kickstarter reviews. Um or spotlights to uh, ones that are that I get a lot of requests from you guys the fans to review or that the content creator themselves says hey I just put this thing out there can you do a review on it would you be interested if I send this to you could you do a review hey our Kickstarter just started you know we'd love if you do a review it that kind of a thing so that's sort of where I am with this you know if things ease up a little bit uh, you know, and I'm not running all of the campaigns, then perhaps, uh, then I can get back into doing this weekly, um, you know, or maybe I'll go to a monthly thing, I haven't really worked that out yet, but that being said, I had done one a while back, uh, you guys may remember here on the channel, uh, about character options talents, it was sort of a mini feat way to update your characters, add a little bit of, uh, depth to your characters, um, and kind of bring some of that old 3-5 kind of feel, I feel, back to the game. Um, and this was by uh, Dragonix, was the creator here on, uh, on the DMs Guild. Since then, uh, a character options talents 2 has been released. It is within the top 10, I think it's number 8 right now, on the DMs Guild. And, just as last time, uh, uh, the creator has offered me uh, a copy of this to do a review. And as I've said with any time a uh, content creator or someone gives me a product for free for review, I will review it, but I'm not going to you know, sugarcoat my review based on um, the fact that I got it for free. So, uh, I'm going to jump over here to show you guys. We have right here, I'm actually going to turn off this Nerd Immersion logo on the bottom here. Uh, but here it is on the DMs Guild. It is ten dollars, so it's a it's a sizable investment. You know, let's say for a DMs Guild module, it has at least one review on here, uh, five star rating. So it's uh, and you can see some of the other stuff that was done here. Character options. Here's Talents One. Here's Into the Dragon's Maw. This is a Horde of the Dragon Queen adventure. Other stuff that they've done. Um, and then there's some discussion stuff here. And then the run review is you know. Uh, basically exactly what I said, felt it was missing something from 3.5. So, um, again, you can see it's here. It's There's a ton of material, but uh, the creator, Dragonix, uh, was nice enough here to give me uh, access to a copy to go over to re show you guys some of the stuff. You can obviously download the full-size preview here and get some other information, uh, and I'm actually going to be able to give you a sizable chunk of uh, of a handful of the different talents throughout to showcase a couple of different options. So here is the cover art right here, which let me just jump over here. Uh, so we've got the cover art by uh, Sandizen Gonzaga here. We see what looks like a Durger on a rope being attacked by maybe a Water Weird. Um, so let's keep going. So Here's our stuff about the details about the book. You can click on any of these links to get access to the artist, um, to see the actual people behind their Facebook page. Uh, some stuff here about the warrior itself. Um, oh, an abolith, my mistake. Here's about this book, you know, open game license stuff. And then a section here about acquiring talents. So again, let me give you the official terminology of what are talents. Uh, extraordinary aspects of a character's ability, background, personality, physique, proficiencies, and features. They're similar to, but not always as powerful as standard feats. They offer a means for you to improve your current existing abilities slightly or temporarily shift game mechanics into your favor. How do you get feats, or, or how do you get talents? Um, there are a couple, because they're not a... Uh, and I guess it, it needs to be said, I should have said this earlier, this is not Adventure League legal. That actually is now a qualifier we need to make as DM's Guild Adept content is Adventure League legal, the majority of it. So I need to put this out front that if you come here looking for AL stuff, this is homebrew, so this does not count for Adventure League. Um, 
So there's rules. Custom rules. You acquire one at first level, another at third, and every three levels thereafter. If you choose this option, you must ensure that NPCs and monsters get talents too to keep the game fair. Makes sense. Treat as a feat. Uh, when you are eligible to acquire a feat, you can take a talent instead. When you do so, you get an ability score improvement of one. So sort of like the feats that give you that, you would kind of, this kind of is in there. Or treat as a half of a feat. When you are eligible to acquire a feat, you can take two talents instead. I will go a step further and talk to you guys as DMs. I think that these, I said this in the last video, and I'll reiterate it again. We'll go through some of these, and you'll, you'll kind of hear it. Uh, I feel like they are a great way to reward your players. If you're looking to do a little something, and you don't want to give your players a magic item, uh, or something more tangible uh, for extreme situations of great role playing their characters just like overcame a great obstacle figured out something from their backstory something like that and you want to reward them with something giving them one of these talents may be an option for you now i'm not going to say that every talent will slot into perfectly uh any other you know every character but you know if you have a character that makes they they did decide to take a feat and they make use of that feat constantly and they do something and you want to reward them then perhaps a feat, uh, a talent that expands that feat's, um, what that feat can do, maybe that's how you, you do it. Or think about the talents potentially as something on a magic item. Maybe rather than, um, you, know, a sing, uh, you know, a plus one or a plus two or extra damage, perhaps it's a cloak of talent X or a headband of talent Y. And this way, you can come up, you, as the DM, look like a super, in, uh, you know, innovative, creative uh, uh, dungeon master to come up with these cool magic items, but really you're just taking a talent from this book here, or this module, and in putting it onto an item, and that kind of gives you a little something extra, and then it makes your trying to design homebrew items a little bit easier. The players are like, "Whoa, check out how this cool thing that I got!" Maybe it's a, maybe it's an always-on thing. Maybe it's a once per day or per long rest or three times per short rest or whatever you want to say. But again, I'll go through a couple and you tell me what you think. Some have prerequisites. A lot of them are uh, racial-based, skill-based. Uh, some of them are feat-based. They're feat expansions, which is kind of what I was talking about a little bit there. Some are, um, you know, type, uh, subclass type, which I actually really do like. Um, this again, as someone who loves Adventure League, uh, or Adventure League, is loves 3-5 rather, um, I liked that you could get, you could really diversify based on some options you take in like a subclass. Like if you have this feature and this feature, then you can take this feat. And this makes me feel like you can really get uh, variability in a subclass like you could be playing a thief and i could be playing a thief but if i had access to these talents and you did too and we took different varying talents we could even be the same class and same subclass and still have variation which is pretty cool but it also is a cool way to feel like you're really personifying what it is to be your subclass personifying the thief rogue personifying the oath of vengeance paladin or what have you uh, there's several different types of talents. Um, we'll show you a couple of those as I, as I go through this. Uh, game balance, again, this is important because these are going to fundamentally alter the way the game is played. Um, a couple ways to balance the game. Suggestions. Obviously, everybody can do their own. You don't have to. You can come up with your own homebrew way, but there's a couple suggestions here. Reduce the starting total ability scores of players by 2 to 4. Uh, and or set a maximum starting ability score of 14 after racial bonuses. Assign talents to NPCs or even humanoid monsters. As a standard, monsters have one talent for every four hit dice rounded up. Class talents can also be applied to monsters who have classes or class-like features. Increase the average level of the party by one for every three levels when calculating challenge rating. Um, and then source material. This does make use of... Sword Coast Adventures Guide, uh, Elemental Evil, and I believe Volo's Guide as well. Now, Unarthed Arcana, Sword Coast Adventures Guide, Elemental Evil, and the DMG. It also will have access to uh, things like new races, uh, even as the most recent ones. So we have Janazi, and we have the Gith, which was just recent Unarthed Arcana. Goliath, Changeling, Minotaur, Shifter, Deep Gnome. So we're talking 
new Unearthed Arcana published races, but then also way back to original, um, like, uh, Unearthed Arcana, Waterborn, and, and things like that, as well as stuff for the Artificer and the Mystic, so that's the new sub, the new classes. Um, all right, and then we have, uh, a little bit of a talent description, and then I will show you guys this. I, I don't have any problem showing you guys this because this is available for you to preview on the DMG. So you can see here's general talents, combat based, miscellaneous based. Then there's a whole bunch of racial ones. And then you see there's all the class based ones as well. We'll see. We don't want to skip too far ahead here. And then, yeah, all the class based ones. And then we're going to roll into the actual talents. So without further ado, let me put this back on me and I'll throw the actual talent on the screen ideally in post uh, so let's see what we have I was given a list of ones that I could go over I didn't have to choose them but I had a long list and the creator had suggested them so why don't we talk about those so first up we have witch hunter so let me sorry I gotta organize things here uh, so this one is actually based off of the mage slayer feet so you have to have the mage slayer feet to make use of this the benefit is you have three witch hunter options once per turn you can choose one of the following options oh you have th i'm sorry you have three witch hunter points right so you have a new point system to manage spend two witch hunter points to reroll an attack roll made against a non-good aligned spellcaster Spend two, uh, that was called Slay Witch. There's Resist Witch. Spend two Witch Hunter points. Reroll a saving throw made against an ability or spell cast by a non good aligned spellcaster. Or Hunt Witch. Spend one Witch Hunter point to reroll an intelligence or wisdom ability check made to gain information on, detect, track a non good aligned spellcaster. You must use the second result regardless of if it's lower. And you regain your Witch Hunter points when you finish a short rest. So again, this is perhaps your character is has the Mage Slayer feat, and you've gone above and beyond, and they're really focusing on that, and then this could be a way to reward them, or, you know, if that's the route you decide you want to go. So, what other options do we have? Let me see here. Uh, okay, Ambuscade. So this is on the same page here. Uh, when you, you need to have the alert feat to make use of this. When you roll initiative, you can use a special turn that takes place before other creatures can act. On this turn, you can use your action to either take the attack, dash, or hide action. You can also use your action to cast a spell or use an item uh, Use an item action, but the spell's casting time or the item activation must be no more than one action. If you would normally be surprised at the start of an encounter, you are not surprised, but you do not gain this extra turn. Once you use this feature, you cannot use it again until you finish a short or long rest. Now, I believe Ambuscade was actually a option available to, I think, one of the, either the Revised Ranger or one of the Unearthed Arcana, and they kind of just turned it into a talent. So, um, again, we are here in several combat-based ones. We have ones I'm looking just through based on other feats, based on your level, uh, you know, based on your level, and then certain archetypes combined together. This next one we've got, we're going to skip ahead a few pages, two page, uh, we're getting there. This I think we're getting into, yep, now we're into the racial section. So this one is called Stone Grip and Improved Stone Grip. So Stone Grip is required by a Goliath um, strength 18 or higher. So you got to be a Goliath is your race. And have a strength of 18 or higher. The benefit is you can wield a two-handed melee weapon in one hand. However, you cannot wield a two-handed melee weapon in each hand at the same time. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that improved stone grip probably lets you do just that. You can wield a two-handed melee weapon in each hand at the same time. But it requires Goliath, the stone grip talent, and a strength of 20 or higher to do it. So you get to, you get to see how some of these work. Um, okay, let's keep going. We've got one called, the next one on the list is Bloodlust. So what is that one? Uh, this is a Barbarian uh, class feature. Uh, requires you to be an 18th level Barbarian and either be the Path of the Berserker or Path of the Battle Rager. 
Uh, during your turn and only once per turn while you are raging, when you slay a creature with a melee weapon attack and there is an enemy creature within range of your movement speed, you can immediately move up to your speed towards that enemy creature and make one melee attack at it. This attack does not count against the number of extra attacks you can make when you attack, when you take the attack action and your movement during this action does not count against your maximum move speed per turn. I'm looking at some of the other Barbarian ones here, and I see ones for Path of the Storm Herald, Path of the Ancestral Guardian, and Path of the Zealot, as well as we saw Battle Rager um, and Totem Warrior. So again, these are designed for the new Unearthed Arcana uh, subclasses, which are going to be in Xanathar's Guide. Um, and we see some ones, some actually nice things for the Battle Rager, which is nice because you know they didn't get a lot of love and i have my own issues about the battle rager but we'll move on next one is called hilarious jest you can guess that this is a bard based one so this is for a ninth level bard this is the college of satire we know this is one that is not coming in xanathar's guide so this is if you're playing the unearthed arcana version so you have to be level nine college of satire after successfully using cutting words on a creature, choose one creature within 30 feet of the cutting words target that you can see and that can see and hear the target. The creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or fall prone, becoming incapacitated and unable to stand up until uh, the end of their next turn. A creature with an intelligence of four or less isn't affected. So this is an example. It makes cutting words even better, which cutting words is an option that uh, I believe College of Satire Bards get on top of some of their other things that they have access to. I'd have to double check that though, because I thought Cutting Warriors was a uh, Valor a Lore Bard only, but I could be wrong. I haven't looked at College of Satire in quite a while. But this again is an example of this could be someone who uses Cutting Words all the time, and their means of using Cutting Words is to make jokes and demean, um, you know, or, or, or something of that nature to whatever they use their Cutting Words. Uh, this could be like, hey, you know, you finally hit the next level of Bard or the next. You know, you've done whatever, you've overcome. Now your cutting words feature does this. Or, you know, you got a jester hat um, of hilarity. And you put this hat on, and when you wear this hat, and whether it's a tune or not is the DM's call, when you use your cutting words feature, you get this option. So that's kind of what I was saying about you could add it to an item. You could make it part of the character's development, which, which I do. That's what I... Most likely going to use these four in my game just because I do feel like they do add, um, as far as balance goes, they do make it slightly more um, more powerful. So you're going to need uh, to balance it out. And that's why I feel like if you make them few and far between, tied to a cool character event, plus, you know, it, it'll help the players feel like, oh shit, I did this cool thing with my character and I got this other cool thing. And then the other characters will be like, oh man, I really wish I could do that. And then they start wanting to role play more and develop and build their characters. And that only helps you as the DM to ta to craft a great story, as well as to also, um, you know, it helps to encourage the players and everybody's invested and everybody wins. Next one is called Divine Boon. You can guess that this is a cleric one. Actually, this is cleric, paladin, or favored slash divine soul sorcerer only. When you are an ally uh, within 30 feet, uh, you can see that makes an attack roll, saving throw, or ability check. Uh, but before the outcome is determined, you can use a reaction and expend a spell slot. If you expend a first level slot, roll a d4 and add the result to the previous roll. If you expend a second level slot, you can roll two d4s. If you can expend a third or higher level slot, you can roll three d4s. Once you use this feature, you cannot use it until you finish a short or long rest. So this, the, the, there's all of them do have flavor text, I should say. You consume magical energy to increase your allies chances of successful attack save or check again this is very reminiscent of the bless spell or the guidance cantrip something that i feel like clerics uh use quite often this could be a cool way to boost the power of i mean they don't need to know that it's a talent but you're basically boosting their guidance or boosting their uh their bless spell uh, you know, maybe if maybe it's your cleric always casts bless to help out the rest of the party rather than helping themselves, and as such, their deity grants them this divine boon that says, you know, my child, I appreciate the work you have done in my service. Let me, um, the way you have aided your allies, let me increase that power so that you may continue to do my work and spread the goodwill. Blah blah blah, whatever. 
right? And then now you can do this. Cool option to, to and again, because it's so close to, um, so close to those spells, it kind of makes sense where you could easily slot that in. Next one is Bestial Instinct. This is a Druid one, just requires Druid level three. After using an action to activate Wild Shape, you can use a bonus action and make one natural weapon attack. Pretty simple. This could be an item, you know, again, I don't want to discredit any of the other options at the top. I'm just giving you how I would run them in my game. This could be, you know, a uh, collar of bestial instinct, right? And then this is what they get, which I may actually add it to one of my games. Uh, okay, so we have Oath of Wrath is next. So we're going to skip a couple of classes to get to the Oath of Wrath. This is, now this is an interesting one because this is for uh, a fighter fighter yeah it's a fighter but it's the purple dragon knight archetype so this is the uh purple dragon knight is the one of the fighter archetypes from sword coast adventures guide which is highly regarded as the absolute worst fighter subclass by any means and i don't think that's any stretch at all it's awful uh but that being said here's an option for it which may help to make things a little bit easier so you got to be level nine and a purple dragon knight select an opponent within 60 feet that can see and hear you you can use a bonus action and swear to defeat the target opponent you gain advantage to all your attack rolls and saving throws made against that target this effect ends after one minute the target is defeated or you attack another creature other than the target once you use this feature you need to complete a long rest that's actually a useful ability and if that was built into the class it might actually make it something that people would actually play um i have my issues with it and that's uh, like my biggest issue with that is that that's published in an official source and it's so bad and there's some great unearthed arcana ones that will never potentially see the light of day and that makes me uh, upset so we've got kiss of death coming up here which i believe is a monk one which could be interesting if i'm it is it's a monk ability uh which is for way of the long death monk which is the on our or the sword coast adventures guide monk monk level nine uh, in way of long death you can sense when your strike has nearly dealt a mortal blow to a creature when you reduce a creature within five feet of you to a number of hit points equal to or less than your monk level which at this point will be nine you can spend two key points to deal necrotic damage equal to the target's remaining hit points once you use this feature you must you have to uh, complete a short or long rest this is awesome i love that i think that that's great a uh, way of the long death monk i do feel gets uh overlooked a, a lot of times uh it has some really powerful abilities at the start and really powerful abilities at the end and the middle isn't so great which is why i feel that i haven't personally seen it get a lot of play i love this though um because it kind of taps into that whole you're a monk who kind of is following this sort of death mantra thing and you as such you can see when a creature is uh low on health and then you can spend key points to kind of deal the sort of the finishing blow as it were all right fiendish servant this is this for no i'm looking at the mystic we're just scrolling past the mystic but there are several mystic options here uh we are now into the paladin so we're going to go to the fiendish servant for the paladin this is for a ninth level oathbreaker paladin so this is the paladin contained in the dungeon master guide this is the one for paladins who have broken uh their oath so you can use an action to summon a fiend from the lower planes the fiend must have a challenge rating equal to or less than a quarter of or one fourth of your paladin level rounded down the fiend is bound to you for the next 24 hours a bound creature must follow your instructions to the best of its ability you might command the creature to accompany you on an adventure to guard a location or to deliver a message the creature obeys the letter obeys the letter of your instructions if the creature carries out your instructions completely before the spell ends it travels to you to report this act if you are on the same plane of existence if you are on a different plane of existence it returns to the plane where you bound it and remains there until the spell ends you can only have one fiendish servant at a time if you summon another fiendish servant while you currently have one already bound the latter returns to its plane of existence once you finish a long uh, this once you use this feature you must finish a long rest um so i really like this i think it taps into the evil blackguard ability 
some really cool character art on the screen that you guys can't see, but I do enjoy it. Um, and it makes me feel like this is very reminiscent of the Blackguard of old. Uh, and I really enjoyed the Blackguard back in 3.5. So this kind of gives me that feeling. But it, it could also be a cool thing uh, to do if you have an NPC who's a paladin, right? And you don't know what kind of paladin they are, then they don't time and things right. And then the fiendish servant that they sent now comes back to report to them. And then like the whole, there's the whole reveal. Uh, and it's not, I mean, the highest you'll have is a fifth level fiend, which is at level 20, mind you. So you got to be at level 20, which how, how, how often does that happen? A fifth level fiend to help you out for 24 hours. Um, it is pretty powerful by all means, but, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I still like it. It's just, I, this is my opinion. You guys can have differing opinions and let me know what you think in the comments below, but I'm just giving you my thoughts. Uh, all right, next up is Bravado of Cunning Maneuver, which is several pages past, so let's keep going. I believe this is... Uh, oh, Bravado or Cunning Maneuver. My mistake. These are rogue abilities. So let's go with... Uh, let's go with Cunning Maneuver. This is just a straight rogue level 3, not tied to a subclass. You can use your cunning action to move through a creature's space by using an acrobatic stunt, a tumble, a flip, a pirouette, a slide, or a barrel roll. When you do so, you make an acrobatics check contested by the creature's insight check. If your check succeeds, you can use sneak attacking against that creature even if you do not have advantage against it or if there is no enemy within 5 feet. You can use sneak attack in this way even if you have disadvantage against the target. However, you are still not... Uh, you are still only allowed one sneak attack per turn. If your check fails, you're unable to move into the creature's space, stopping within five feet of it, and your speed becomes zero, and you gain disadvantage on your attack turn, uh, rolls until the end of your turn. I like this. This is very similar to the way the tumble skill used to work back in 3.5, and this is kind of inborn into a rogue ability, which means you have to be level three. You're using your cunning action. I really like it. I, I think it's a cool ability. Um, I think you could this one you could potentially build a subclass around having this ability. Maybe you call it the acrobat, right? And you call it, this is your third level rogue ability. Um, is this cunning maneuver? Is the, now you've, we've just started building a whole new subclass based on one of these talents. So there's a lot of useful stuff here for you guys to pull from. Um, okay, let's keep going. What do we got next? We are jumping a few pages to this is the sorcerer, I believe manipulate earth uh this is a long one this is one of the unearth arcana this is the stone sorcery which unfortunately did not make it into xanathar's guide maybe it'll make it into a future subclass but it requires you to be 15th level and be a stone sorcerer a sorcerer level 15 and a and in stone sorcery when using your stone's durability you can enter into a state where you can mentally manipulate the earth around you each turn, you can perform the following abilities, and there are a list of three. Launch Earth, raise a lower Earth, or form bridge. Launch Earth as an action, you remove or raise a 5-foot section of Earth from the ground and launch it at a target within 60 feet of you. Each creature in a 10-foot radius sphere centered on that point must make a deck save uh, equal to your source for spell save DC, or take 3d6 bludgeoning damage on a, on a fail, half on a success. Raise or lower Earth. As a bonus action, you can raise or lower the 5-foot section of ground within 30 feet, you can raise the earth to a height of or depth of 20 feet, creating a pillar or a pit. You can continue to raise the pillar or lower the pits up to 20 feet per your action, uh, for, per bonus action up to a total of 60 feet. And lastly, form bridge. As a bonus action, you can create a bridge made from earth 20 feet long and 5 feet wide. You can continue to lengthen the bridge up to 20 feet per bonus action up to a total of 60 feet. However, the origin point of the bridge must stay connected to the earth at all times. Otherwise, the bridge collapse, uh, collapses. Uh, the feature lasts while you maintain concentration, so you got to concentrate on it for one minute. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Again, this is also a way to help potentially give you options for character if you're playing an Unearth Arcana class that didn't make it into a published source and get the updates and possibly the power increases. This helps you out there. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Manipulate Earth. Oh, there are several sorcerer forms. I'm going to grab, let's see, the wraith form. Um, and I'm just because I have the option of multiple, we'll grab this one. So the wraith form um, is for the shadow sorcerers, which is one that's going to be in Xanathar's Guide. That's why I grabbed it. 
got to be an 18th level sorcerer and of the shadow type. Uh, so this is your wraith form. You can spend 10 sorcery points to transform yourself into a creature similar to a wraith. It has identical features described in uh, shadow form, except in addition, you gain the following benefits. You have a fly speed of 60 feet. On your turn, you can use an action to make a melee spell attack that deals 21 necrotic damage, uh, 48 plus 3. The target must succeed on a constitution saving throw equal to your sorcerer spell save DC or have its hit point maximum reduced by an amount equal to your to the damage taken. This reduction lasts until the target finishes a long rest. The target dies if this effect reduces them to zero hit points. So I sort of gave you guys a little bit of a sneak preview to, uh, I believe, maybe not. Um, oh, you know, I think there's a shadow form for the shadow sorcerer, if I recall. But... Again, this sort of makes sense because you have some sort of shadow in your history, right? And now you're kind of getting close to as close as you can get to becoming the shadow by accessing this wraith form via this talent. Um, all right, we got Blade Surge. Uh, and then one more after that. So we do... I'm looking... I'm scrolling through Warlock right now. Um, just to see. We have the various Warlocks. There's a lot of love for... Uh, the Paladin to increase their curses. Uh, they added Paladin uh, Hexblade's Metal, which I won't talk about, but that was one of my favorite abilities about the Hexblade back in 3.5. Um, and there is art throughout this whole book, and the art is very pretty. Uh, so I, it is definitely worth checking out just for that. Blade Surge, I believe, is going to be a wizard ability for the Blade Song, uh, the Blade Singing Tradition uh elf uh wizard so for this you need to be a level 15 wizard an elf and be a blade singer and while your blade song is active and you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack you can expend a spell slot to deal force damage to the target in addition to the weapon damage the extra force damage is 2d6 per spell slot up to a maximum of 12d6 the creature is allowed a saving throw against your wizard spell save dc on a successful save the creature takes uh, half damage. So this sort of this blade surge is basically a blade singer's as close you're going to get to a paladin smiting ability. It lets you go a little bit higher than a paladin smite, but they get a save against it. So that kind of balances it out a little bit. And then lastly, we're going to keep going past all of the wizard to the very to the end here. We have Lich Touch, which is a level 15 wizard in the necromancy arcane tradition. So you can make, this makes, basically gives you access to the Lich's, like whatever it is, Enervating Touch, I think it's called. Uh, you can make a melee attack, a spell attack against a creature uh, that deals 3d6 cold damage. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, the target must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be paralyzed for a minute. The save DC is equal to your wizard DC. The target can repeat this saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending it on a success. And once you use this feature, you cannot use it again until you finish a short or long rest. Uh, and then at the end of that, after we scroll through that, it has a link to all of the Unearthed Arcana uh, where you can find them all on the website so you can go back and reference if any of these things don't make sense to you. Then at the end, there is a sort of preview for Monstrous Talents. I'm going to grab you one of these just to kind of tell you what's going on. So this is coming soon, but this is talents to give to your enemy monsters to sort of, we talked a little bit about to balance things out, give your your creatures... Um, you know, the things they're fighting talents to even it out. Well, there are specific, uh, Dragon X is building monstrous talents, which not only you could use to balance out against players that are using talents, but can also use to make one of your monsters more unique or something of that nature. So, uh, let's, I'm going to grab you this one right here. Numbing Breath. This creature's, uh, the prerequisite is it has to be a creature that has a breath attack, breath weapon of some kind, that deals cold damage. So, enemy targets that fail their saving throws and take damage to the creature's cold breath weapon are slowed for one minute. The target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of their turns, ending it on a success. Uh, if the breath weapon does not allow a saving throw, enemies that take damage from the breath weapon are slowed until the end of their next turn. Uh, so... This is basically this could be for your methods. This could be for your, your your white dragons and things of that nature. And when it says slowed, I'm assuming this means it's like the slow spell. 
which means it's a decrease to their dex saves, a decrease to their AC. They can only take an action or a bonus action and no reactions at all. Um, if it works like the slow spell, if they start casting a spell, it, it they start and it doesn't complete till the following turn. Very powerful. And this could be something like maybe a Rassiter, the uh, great, the one of the great white dragons of the Forgotten Realms, the old white death, as he's called. Perhaps he's lived long enough, and you want to take your dragon. You don't want to. Let's say you don't want to give it spell casting, but you want to make this dragon, who's grown to be quite powerful and is much older, you want to give this dragon some ability that makes it above and beyond the other dragons to make it stand out to make the fight more memorable on your players maybe this is how you do it things like this so this is coming soon the monstrous talents and then again we have um to remind you that we have the previous 230 talents from character talents one and then there is into the dragon's maw is a five or six hour adventure for characters in the fourth to sixth range uh, works very well um, to be used in the Tyranny of Dragons storyline, uh, but could be used elsewhere with a little finagling. Um, and it has a pretty... I've read through it, and I'm trying to figure out when I'm going to throw it into my game. It is very cool. Uh, so, again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit long, obviously. I went through a lot of stuff. But this gives you a pretty good insight into what... Uh, you can expect if you go to spend the $9.99 to pick up the character uh, options talents too, which again is here on the DMs Guild. The link to it to purchase it will be in the description below. And if you do decide that you are going to pick it up and leave a discussion, comment, or a review on this, uh, let them know that you came here and found it and downloaded it because you heard about it uh, from Nerd Immersion's review and spotlight. So. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you see anything in the DMs Guild you'd like me to review, or you're a creator who's made something on the DMs Guild and you'd like me to review it, just go ahead and hit me up on any of my social media, Twitter, Facebook, uh, on this comments on this video, messages on YouTube, Twitch, whatever, and let's talk. Maybe we can set something up in the future. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.